Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use custom resources in Godot. We're going to go over creating your own resource class and then also saving and loading it to your PC. All right, so the first thing we want to discuss is what is a custom resource? So think of a custom resource as kind of like its own data container. So for example, we have JSON files, CSV files, those kind of all hold like a bunch of abstract data. A custom resource is basically the more powerful version of a JSON or CSV file. So we can hold any properties or data that we want, but since it's a resource built into Godot, we can also hold things like signals and functions, setter functions, tool script capabilities, and other really powerful features. So when making games in Godot, things like item data or stats or save files really benefit from using the custom resource workflow because Godot provides so many tools to manipulate the data very easily. So let's look at a quick example here. I have a player node and I have a script attached to it. And we're gonna look at basically adding stats to the player. So typically you might wanna add like an attack stat. So I'm gonna basically define a new export variable. We're gonna call it attack say it's an int and we'll set it equal to like 100. Now this is kind of the typical way someone would do this if you weren't using custom resources and the issue with this is you basically have to define this variable for everything that's going to have an attack stat. So let's say we had an attack stat, maybe we had a defense stat, but if we created an enemy, you'd want to also put that attack variable inside of the enemy because you'd want to have more like modular game logic, right? Now that's obviously fine if you were using like inheritance, right? So you could maybe have an entity class. Let's say we call this class underscore entity. And then by defining this attack variable, anything that inherits from entity is going to have this attack property. And that's technically fine, but this method relies quite a bit on inheritance. So if we have maybe like a, a sign that you can interact with, and maybe for some reason we wanted it to have like a defense value for when you attack it, maybe it could break, that would all of a sudden introduce so many issues with our structure because a sign would inherit from maybe something like object. And then you'd have to basically say, all right, maybe every single object in my game has a stats property. And then you're basically cluttering your entire game with different inheritance trees and everything just becomes a mess. So a really great way to work around this is by using custom resources, which are essentially making your game more modular. So to set that up for something like stats, we're going to go into the scripts folder in my project, right click and create a new script. And I'm just going to call this stats. And then I'm going to make sure that the script inherits from resource. And then once we have this all set up, we can create the script. And by opening the script up, all I want to do at the top is just to find the class name. So I'm going to say class underscore name, and we're going to call this stats. So by saving it now, Godot will register this class as its own resource. And this means that we can simply just right click in our file system and create a new resource and then search for our stats class. And I'm just gonna call it my underscore stats. And now we have a new file called my stats that extends from our stats class. So the benefit of doing this is we can now put the attack variable from our player script. I'm gonna control exit and then we're going to just paste it inside of the stats resource and by saving this i can now open up my stats resource and you can see it has an attack property now expanding on this further we can add a few more variables so like let's say we had a defense variable and maybe we had a health variable whoops these are all going to be contained inside of the stats resource so now instead of defining all these properties for the player we just need to define one property for the player. So let's go back into the player script and we're gonna say new at export var stats and we're just gonna set the type of the variable to our stats class. And now if we save this, we can click on the player and you can see we have this new property which allows us to define a new stats resource and that is the class name the, the stats script that we made earlier. Now, right here, we have two options. We can either drag in our old stats resource that we made in the file explorer, and this is gonna give us all the default values, or we can click on the empty box here and create a new stats resource. And this is going to just initiate a new stats resource locally for this object. So now we can set all of the attack, defense, health values uniquely, 
and they're going to be attached to this player here. So you can already see how using custom resources is a really good way to kind of organize your properties and your code. But there's also a lot more functionality that we'll get into right here that will help take this a step further. So let's go into our stats resource script. And you can see that we can define properties in our stats, but using custom resources, you can also define things like signals or functions. So I'm going to make a new function inside of my stats. I'm going to call it take damage, and I'm just going to make an argument for the amount of damage that we are taking, and this will return void. And inside of this function, all I'm going to do is say health minus equals amount. And now we have a function for taking damage that is associated with our stats, and we know that it's always going to be a part of anything that has stats attached. So let's go back into the player script really quick. And assuming we have a stats object defined for this player, we're going to define the ready function. And in order to actually call the method on our stats components, it's as easy as saying stats dot take damage and passing in a value. And this is obviously a lot cleaner than defining the take damage function inside of like a hitbox manager or inside of the entity script. And this is kind of promoting the workflow of keeping anything to do with the stats inside of the stats script. Now we're gonna look at one more important aspect of custom resources, and that's gonna be saving and loading the resources. So I'm gonna do this in my game script, which is kind of just my global script in my scene right here. And what I'm gonna do is first load in the resource, and then we're gonna make changes to it and then save it as a separate file. Now we're gonna do this on the ready function. So I'm gonna say function underscore ready. And the first thing I'm gonna do is say var loaded resource, and we'll set it equal to load. And I'm just gonna copy the, the path to the my stats resource file and paste it in right here. So we're loading the resource. Now, after it's loaded, we're able to make changes. So maybe I want to change the health by a certain amount. So we'll say loaded resource dot health. And I'm gonna say plus equals 10. And now in order to resave this as a new file, I'm going to first access the resource saver class and then call save, pass in my loaded resource and also the path where I want to save it. And I'm gonna save this as a new file. So we're gonna copy the original path. And instead of saving it as my stats, we're gonna save it as my stats underscore two. So by using this method to load and save your resource, you can create save files and things very easily. And by running this, you can see that we're going to have a new resource when we quit the game and it's gonna be called my stats two. And by opening this up, you can see that our health was indeed changed by 10. And then one more thing to note, if you try to define the ready process or physics process function inside of your custom resource, it won't actually work. And the reason for this is because custom resources aren't a part of the scene tree. They're not actually instanced as nodes in this tree. So therefore they're not going to have a ready function, which is when the scene tree is ready. They're not going to have the process or physics process. They're basically just used as data containers. So that is something to take note of. But aside from that, basically everything else works as far as functions, even tool scripts work as custom resources, and then obviously variables, constants, enums, and even signals. But anyways, I hope this video gave you kind of some ideas on how you can use custom resources in your game. I know for my personal projects, I use them basically everywhere, but I would love to see how you guys are using custom resources. So if you have any really cool resource setups, please let me know in the comments and I'd love to check them out. But thanks for watching the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.